Good morning. Pretty powerful. <laughs> Just to wake you up, uh, my name is Jason. Uh, I run Cherry Picks. It's not a startup. We have, we'd like to think that in terms of company phase, we're past the startup phase, but we would like to think like a startup. Nothing delights me more to be here today. Um, I wish Cocoon is around 12 years ago when I started. But it's not too late. We can applause and help uh, all the other fellow entrepreneurs and guests here. So once again, um, Theodore, Max, thanks for having me. And good morning to all the fellow entrepreneurs, Cocoonians, and friends here. Um, today I'm going to walk you through a little journey about Cherry Picks, how it has struggled and still insists to pursue its dreams until today, we're still trying to make things work. Right? And also, to give you some ideas about how we view the world of mobile innovation and how and what we have done to make a difference and why we are differentiated from the market. Well, first of all, a little corporate introduction. Cherry has been a startup since 2000. It has evolved into two, three phases, and I'll walk through those. But essentially today, it's a global leader in mobile marketing, shopping, and commerce. We're very happy to be you know, a mid-sized company, 150 people in four offices across Hong Kong, China, and Jakarta. We have about you know, um, 70 or 80 awards in the last three years. So we won one award every two weeks. Uh, that perhaps is a little hard to eat. But there are other good things about a company other than awards. We are a Harvard Business School case and we are one of the first, in fact, we are the first company to take Red Herring Asia 100 when it was first available globally. And we applied about eight patents so far to uh, show that Hong Kong innovation and R&D does exist. And uh, innovation in mobile is world class. Now I promise you to take you through a journey, but before the journey starts at Cherry Bits, I have to give you some background about myself. Before year 2000, which was the year that I started Cherry Picks, I did a few things, like normal people. I'm just a normal guy. Somehow, something struck me and I had a dream in year 2000, so I started a company. But before year 2000, I'm an A student from a very good local school. I moved on to study engineering, ace it again. A lot of people, including my professor, wants me to go for a PhD. Uh, I didn't, I went for strategy consulting in high-tech industry because I thought it was challenging. Traveling about 20, oh sorry, 200 days a year. I've uh, been to seven, you know, seven to 20 countries, stayed there for a long time. Uh, look at many different things. I think earlier speaker Jamie talked about reading. I read like crazy every day. I look at all the trends. The reason I'm telling you all this is because whether it's from the school days, intellectual capacity, or consulting this, you're looking at a person that is the most unlikely entrepreneur. Why would I go and start my own business when I'm the youngest director at Deloitte? Which potentially I could, I could become worldwide the youngest partner. I skipped MBA and still become a director at Deloitte in strategy consulting. Why would I do that? Life takes very interesting turns. Anyways, I preach theory, the strategy, and the belief so hard that I believe in myself. So in year 2000, I thought that there will be a new ecosystem of mobile companies that focus on data. At that time, there wasn't 3G, no apps. It was just mobile data. If you remember, year 2000, you have still a black and white phone, but you have a standard called WAP. Wow. We boldly started a business focusing on mobile marketing. At that time, at our disposal, is a black and white phone, two and a half G connection, WAP standard, all we can play with is SMS, and perhaps starting off MMS. We started anyways. We started with four friends in a very small office in Shen Wan, Soho, Rai, Jabo Street. 400 square feet, look at your 14,000 square feet, luxury. I wish we could come here when we started. The service, the service that we brought up after nine months of R&D and really hard work to convince an operator for Hutchison Telecom is Orange Coupon. Ironically, 10 years later, in year 2010, we launched 
iButterfly coupon entertainment service. Both are coupon services, but this one, 5,000 users. Orange coupon, 5,000 users. iButterfly, 200 million coupon users. In the space of 10 years, same concept, coupon download. I'll talk about iButterfly later. Okay, once we started, it was really hard because it was internet bubble burst, Asian financial crisis, but just before SARS, we managed to convince two of my earlier clients in Korea, SK Telecom, one of the biggest cables, and also in Taiwan, Feistin uh, uh, Group, or Feistin Communications, to invest angel funds and seed money into the company. So I got my two million US dollar and started to scale uh, what we do a little bit more and become you know, uh, uh, venturing into other parts of Asia. At that time, we had a VC who value us at about 25 million US dollar by investing 5 million US dollar pre money. That VC is called Asia Tech. I hope, may I ask if there's any friends or previous employees or owners of Asia Tech here? Okay, so I can, I'm free to talk. <laughs> Asia that, Asia that was one of the most famous species at that time, but they got themselves into trouble in the bubble uh, burst, uh, uh, the bubble, internet bubble crisis. So the week before, they sealed the deal and wired the money, they go out. And two months after that point, they closed down. Right? So you're looking at potentially seven million in cash, 25 million pre money, but seven, so 32 million post money ventures. Just one and a half years after starting the year us, gone. So the more we see, the more we do, we're being humbled by all these external factors of how it can impact you. So for entrepreneurs, if you don't have a dream, you're very fragile. Everything hit on you and it's direct hit. We found that mobile marketing isn't viable. The phone is not delivering what the user experience that we wanted to do. So we look at, okay, what else can we do? We always have visions. After so many considerations, we were a little bit like Angry Bird. After 51 games, what can we do? Let's do our last attempt. Let's do Angry Bird. So we did Bring Back Tone. And lo and behold, Bring Back Tone actually turned the whole company around. We were suddenly in a multi-million US dollar profit within two years. And that Bring Back Home business was initially a joint venture or a joint innovation uh, with my angel investor, SK Telecom in Korea. So we got lucky there. And this system ended up being sold to seven countries in Asia. That brings a lot of money. Of course, at that time, I really thought that I was invincible because we had so much difficulties and then still turn around and be able to make so many billions of dollars. We rejected IPO proposals from bankers. Instead, we had our next vision, mobile social media. That was before friends of Facebook even become well known to anyone. Facebook hasn't started yet. But we do mobile social media. And we want to do it in China and Taiwan. We had a very, very good plan. And we were going to execute it. We take the millions of profit, we invest in the company, go and talk to some VC. They happen to be the top VCs, SoftBank, Tokyo Marine, Korea Technology Fund. Uh, are there any colleagues from these three funds here? I can talk really again. <laughs> All right, yes. Um, they gave me 25 million US dollars. Our valuation became 85. I really thought we were invincible. We started a business in the US, uh, sorry, in China, wanting to go to the US afterwards. And at that time, the China business called Yongnian. In Taiwan, Sai Wo, uh, Jane probably have heard about that. Um, we use that money aggressively expanding and eventually we reach a point where we have 5 million real name based registered user in China. This is very valuable because as you know, everything in China is fake. But we manage to have 5 million real name based users. How do we do that? We actually provide mobile social media in terms of SMS services to the university for school purposes, in exchange for the school to give us their student database for verification. Only in China can do that. <laughs> so 200 universities, including the Peking University, gave us their student database. 
right? Great, this is an amazing advertising opportunity. Great business model. If you were VC, you probably would follow invest and come into my company. Wrong. Why? Because your burn rate, you are subsidizing SMS. Your burn rate is 10 times faster than even a normal social media business. And you know, at that time, everyone jumped into social media business without business model, right? And even worse for us, burning faster. Our burn rate at that time, $1.6 million per month. We needed more funds. With this credential, the 5 million real name users, 200 universities, the contracts with 200 universities are where they go for fundraising. Without even thinking about, I may not be able to raise money. Right? 500 staff, 7 offices, we became the first Harvard business case at that time. But you see the arrow goes right down. Because we tried for 6 months, and then eventually 9 months, one event really put the nail to our coffin. And what is that event? Mr. Lehman Brothers. Lehman Brothers prices hit. We know that in the next 18 months, there's no way to raise funds. Just the sentiment and the situation couldn't allow us. So we have three choices. First, bankrupt. Second, sell it so that we don't stop bleeding. Third, we'll just gracefully close down and restart again. I don't know what bargain to be. I actually sold the business, and I suggested to my big VCs that, hey, look, I sold the business that you invested in in the first place, but my valuation for you here is still 85 million, and I have 12 people. I want to do mobile, I want to continue, I want to stand up where I fall, I want to do a management buyout. Give them a buyback loss of some period of time. And because of this, you know, I guess um, very, sincere request. They actually accepted. Of course, looking back, it was not so smart on my part because I could have just closed it down, start another business, hire the 12 people. We're not talking about 200 people, only 12 people. But in the end, whether it's a startup or a big company, integrity and your reputation actually comes first. The reason why I'm standing here today is probably because of that. So, the bold move of MBO put me to a different ballgame because now we refocus back to the day one vision which is mobile marketing, shopping, and commerce. Now this is seven, eight years apart from the beginning. Now in this seven to eight years, completely wasted? Not so, I learned a lot. But in the market, didn't really move that much because there isn't any good mobile user experience that can enable us to, good, good, to do good mobile marketing, shopping, and commerce. Something magical happened at this time. iPhone came out, which obviously is in my bank. No, just kidding. Uh, I didn't know about this. It just so happened that this device and the ecosystem appeared in the market with this timing, and this is the first device that we can do what, what we wanted to do. So this is my startup 1.0. 2008. I literally have to restart. Office, business center. Central, not Shenwan. Number of people, 12. That's how I restart Cherry Picks 2.0 in year 2008. And what happened to year 2009? Jamie had a good point. Good thing about you having no money is that you are forced to focus on what really matters to you. We do nothing except what we do best. Mobile user experience. We've been prepared for seven years. No device can do what we wanted to do. Now there is. The vision, same vision from the beginning. Except we have fewer people, no money, and a die hard dreaming. Still, we can make it into a reality. 2010, we become the first company that have invest heavily in augmented reality. At that time, no one really knows even how to spell augmented reality. We launch AR Browser, AR Vision, which becomes the first in the world and won a lot of awards. And we slowly found that mobile user experiences are about senses of a human being. So forget about a particular service. Once you build all these senses around it, then you can have different combinations to provide the best service because the user experience is at your disposal. I'll talk about that in a moment. And we first talked about the online to offline world in 2010. 
one of the first in the world. By the way, online to offline world is the world that we are living in. Except with a mobile phone, this device can give you extra data and control services that can be, be delivered to you as you walk into a retail shop. Never before any other channels can do that. 2011, we partnered with Dentsu to launch iButterfly Coupon Entertainment. Remember the orange coupon service that we launched in 2000? 10 years apart, millions and millions of users different. Right? And then we also partnered with other companies. We have a very interesting idea about differentiation of the company. Because at that time, a lot of mobile startups, apps company were in the market. How do you differentiate? Everybody talks about cost, scalability, what, you know, is it games, is it, is it utility apps and all that. I think those are wrong questions. It is all about user experience. And we have a philosophy of going right into what matters to the senses of human being. So we invest heavily not on AR anymore, which is a sight sense, on audio, touch, and motion. At that time, we were the first company to get two grand awards in Hong Kong ICT award. 2012, we become the first company that get the ICT award of the year, mobile agency of the year, and best technology company of the year, all in the same year. We launched fast image recognition platform. We actually acquired two startups. Once you have scale and become less in thinking like a startup, you better start smaller teams or acquire external startups so that they can actually move fast and they can actually think like startups. So earlier I said nothing is not, nothing delights me more than coming here. I meant it because I really want to help the local entrepreneurs and if there are ideas that have synergy with us, we will acquire or we will support. We have a policy in the company. The intellectual properties belong to the inquiries or the inventors, not the company itself. So we are actually very open-minded to work together uh, in any innovation. Now we have um, successful products. In fact, we have seven platforms, one of which is iButterfly. It's already in 10 countries. It's going to launch in Italy and Turkey next month. Probably it will become one of the first mobile marketing and shopping apps in its own right in the world. We are the world champion uh, earlier this month, and now we are preparing the second public case for officers 150 people. I don't know. That's where we are. Are we successful? I don't think so. We're just normal people having a big dream, still trying to make it happen. As we stand right now, I can tell you a little bit about how we are looking at the market, how we are running the company, how we think about innovation. When we work in Hong Kong, you become number one in Hong Kong. That's nothing to applaud about because it's a small market. What you want to do really is to look at the world and become number one in the world. It should be your objective, everyone sitting here as an entrepreneur. But as we go through this journey, the more we see, the more we are humbled by how little we are and how limited we are in our creativity. Right? So we had an opportunity to compete in uh, the Madison Avenue in New York. We got a best innovation award there. But we see the sheer innovation and the way they approach things are so much from the left view. I'm not sure whether that's from the education system here or just because people mixing up here it's just different mechanics, the way the society works or something. But certainly, go, go around, grow about the world in different centers. My favorites are Israel, North Europe, and US. You get a load of ideas. It's just amazing. We were totally humble. In the MODEF Mobile Development Conference, first international MODEF, last Friday, we meet all the US developers. But look, I don't think they're top tier in Hong Kong. I don't think Hong Kong is even on their map. So what I want to do is, I want to get a few mobile developers in Hong Kong and go and attack their heart in Washington, D.C. <laughs> this year, and see what we've got. I know we are you know, just a small market, but innovation in mobile is hardly a 
behind. It is actually world class. Um, I think uh, our chief executive, CY Learn, is very interested in technology. He actually you know, came and talked to us when we had the ceremony last Monday. He asked a big question. How does this work? <laughs> well, at least he asked. Winning in Hong Kong is great. Representing Hong Kong to win internationally is even better. This is Asia Pacific in Brunei. The Prince gave us the award. Uh, this is in Abu Dhabi, World Summit Award. So you might ask, okay, well, I brag about all these winning so much. Uh, what have you actually done? Well, if you're using any mobile app or mobile web services on Hong Kong Bank, Hang Seng Bank, MTR, Jockey Club, Prudential, AGS, TVP, LBN, anywhere in the world, then you're using our service. That's one of our business. The other business, create our own platforms. Our butterfly is one better known. There are other ones. Even TVP Fund, which was so famous last year when this Hong Kong was done. <laughs> it was actually done by us. Of course, I like to think that it was fixed by us. This year, in, April, in August, we're going to do the voting again. <laughs> this time, it's really done by us. <laughs> okay, the other platforms, you will slowly see it, but uh, we're launching it first in China, and then probably in Hong Kong. So we want to lead the world in mobile marketing and commerce. How do we do that? Well, we observe that there are a lot of use cases using your imagination. This is Mary. Mary take a mobile phone while she's shopping, point at her shoes, she's trying on new shoes. And then her friends are commenting whether she look, looks good or not on the shoes, right in real time, right? Her husband point at another pair of shoes, but he's not looking for others' opinion. He's looking for where is the cheapest place to buy. After shopping tightly, they want to take care of the baby. Well, the film, there's a map showing where they are and how they go to the child care center. By the way, all these, online to offline, all these, physical, virtual, between these worlds, serve my mobile. And by the way, it's not tomorrow, it's today. All these are use cases, but at the end of the day, what makes these services happen? And how, as a provider, we can make a difference? We go all the way, way back to the square one, what is the basic building blocks and elements of user experience? Our senses. Well, we have five senses, and these five senses actually control how we understand and how we use our service. If you excel in some of these, you can put them in very innovative use on typical, traditional, or dull services. We talk about coupon services. Ten years ago, we had our attempt. We made orange coupon, and that was using mobile phone download coupon and have a collection tool. But we found that 5,000 users at that time was a top download. 5,000 users isn't even a user trial these days. So we thought that why don't we use the sense of visual and sight to make a difference? Coupon download, based on our research, shows that usually it takes 15 to 20 seconds for a user to download a coupon. 10 shopping apps can have coupon downloads. All the users are thinking of how much discount you're giving me. They don't even think about the brand or other brand alternative. They're just going after the incentive. What we've done is we rebrand the whole thing. We call it iButterfly. Users have to make an effort to download a coupon. It may not exist. You may not find it. You have to physically chase and search for it in the form of a 3D butterflies based on your location. And when you see the coupon, you have to actually physically catch it just like the pleasant memories that we have when we were small, catching butterflies. So you're looking at a personalized coupon download service based on your location, your profile. Consumer has to make an effort. Now the statistics tell us after 200 million coupons downloaded, people take three minutes to download one coupon. And they're not really thinking about how much discount they're going after. The process becomes pleasant and monetizable because the brands are willing to pay for it. Let me show you a video. Can discounts and coupons be fun? Do you think so? Introducing our Butterfly, a smartphone app that has literally turned the sky into a canvas. 
Our Butterfly is a unique and innovative mobile platform that allows you to transmit your brand message into the air. With a clever combination of smartphones, GPS services, motion sensor, and augmented reality technology, we are now able to turn any promotional message into fun and entertaining experience. Just imagine a sky filled with butterflies, virtual butterflies. Look out for butterflies around you and catch them with a flick of your phone to uncover instant prizes, discounts, and other virtual collectibles. Users can even create their own butterfly collection and share favorites with their friends on Facebook and other social media channels. So what found, one thing we found is the concept is simple and yet it actually go across different cultures. The most popular market is Taiwan, uh, sorry, is Thailand, uh, our all these nine countries. It actually has more users in Thailand because we than in Taiwan. So in Hong Kong, this is a mobile operator. They run new campaigns. So in China, we run it in the chains of boxes. Thailand, Sony actually put up a TV ad for that. Anybody speak Thai? Wow, get out of Vietnam is a movie theater. There's a concept of paying in. All of these marketing exposure are not paid by us. We build a product that marketing is paid in the product. It's inherent in the market itself. Or the customer who pay us actually market it for us. This is very interesting. Indonesian music band. They released their music album with the butterfly. So you download, you Catch a butterfly and download that music. We have over 200 campaigns, we won 18 global awards, actually 19 now, and some of the unfortunate MBA students are studying our case. Well, this is a story where I think a couple of things we should take note. One is fake it, second, have some ideas that has three elements. First element, technology. Not difficult to copy anything, but if you have a higher barrier, it does help <coughs> and the technology goes right into the user experience. So even if somebody copy you, it is not as smooth an experience. We have so many copycats. Uh, Indonesia with iDragonfly, in Ooh. China with Alibaba, Tmall, uh, Tencent, everybody. Why are people still using Apple's? Because we fly better. <laughs> Second, only start service when you have business model. This is very different compared to the internet. I always believe that if I don't have a business model, when I have a good app, a good idea, somebody can steal it and they have the same power and I don't because I don't have a business model. So in here, day one, I don't have a business model. I'm charging the brand. There is a fixed price and I'm rolling out in each country. Why is it 10 countries? Why is it not global? It is global, but the 10 countries means 10 countries with paying brands. Third, make sure that you actually have a roadmap and you can support global cloud infrastructure to roll out. We are doing Italy, Turkey, and Czech Republic in the next month. So if your design is not supportive of that, then you will have trouble. Okay, the second sense, touch. Well, touch is not something that is between your finger and the screen. What we're doing right here is using other media to interact with your touch screen. Because in the new world of advertising and marketing, you're looking at convergence of customer touch points. You cannot really just treat 
mobile as a silo and work on mobile only. So in this sense, we have created, we have created a service where we turn any printable service upon touching a touch screen. The touch screen can identify what this print is all about. I'll show you a game. And this game is your well-known soccer or football card. With this card, you download a mobile app and you can use the card to play the game. These paper are normal, 100% recyclable paper with no electronics. And you know, this is an iPad, so no NFC. And yet, when you put the paper on the screen, the screen identifies what paper this is. And then you can actually play a game. There are so many applications of this, marketing, Magazines of readerships now become CRM because the readers become this person. In China, secret companies, every pack of secret you bought is fake. Now, take the secret, put it on your phone, they'll tell you with a physical signature whether this is real or not. Authentication. Luxury brands will love this. Your toothpaste, toothpaste package. We're talking to Unilever. They know that they sold 400 million toothpaste of a particular brand, Zhonghua in China each year, but they don't, they don't know where they're sold, how they're consumed, what are the flavors by households. So they create an app, other users can use that toothpaste every time they purchase it, put it on the, on the iPad or on the touch screen. Then they know all the users' purchase pattern, where they purchase, where they use, how the flavors are being used by households in return for some incentive for the household. So all these is a new way to use different senses for marketing on mobile. Well, if that's not crazy enough, let's look at audio. Well, audio is not something that you can hear, you can hear either. I'm, I'm talking about something that you cannot hear. We use ultrasound or high frequency audio to control your phone without you knowing. How do we do that? Well, we just borrow from nature. We borrow from nature and the science. Dolphin and bats already have this built in. Ultrasound frequency prevent them from hitting objects as they swim and fly at night. We use the same ultrasound to control mobile device and apps while no normal human would just be bypass or would not hear. One example of this is, imagine you're watching YouTube or TV. We embed an audio watermark in the video. And in this video, you can instruct your film what you're watching. Whether you're watching it on my TV, computer, or another iPhone, reach out and swing your iPhone to catch the characters as you see them appear on screen. So I can actually watch any favorite shows, let's say, or maybe a TV commercial, and then do catching. And I can catch my favorite jewelry during an advertising or coupon shop. It works on YouTube as well. And all these just interactions with the phone. Look out for the Honda Jazz app coming soon to the App Store. Same philosophy and technology works on indoor positioning. There are many, many startups in the world working on this. And you probably have heard about apps like Jumping in the US, and there are several. Some might be done by us actually in this part of the world. We install ultrasonic base station to do a guided tour. I can accurately tell that Herman is sitting in front of me within one meter of accuracy in a room without GPS, in a room that is underground, in a room that has no Wi-Fi or 3G coverage because I'm using two or three stations. Physical hardware of loudspeaker that triangulates you based on ultrasound. Already implemented this, but not in Hong Kong and Shanghai. This is a two-story 
Experience Center by Unilever. Basically, a guide you to our. I want to show you more of these kind of technology innovations that we come up with based on sensors so that perhaps it can stimulate your innovation as well. But this is the core of what we differentiate ourselves with. And other patents that we use, we're not doing one-way sonic anymore. We actually do two-way. And the result, we replace NFC. So this is an iPhone on an Android tab. If you put an iPhone on it, the two devices actually talking to each other based on ultrasound and encrypted ultrasound. No electronics, no NFC, no need for Wi-Fi, no 3G, no Bluetooth. And yet, it can actually perform the same function as NFC does. This is loyalty program stamping and redemption process. Very happy to say that in, uh, in Hong Kong next month, there will be a couple of uh, merchants and brands adopting this. You'll see this in the POS. Okay, well, that, if that's not crazy enough, how about smell? How the hell can you use a mobile phone to tackle the smell? The olfactory sense. Any idea? I admit that we didn't produce that. It is a Japanese company, and perhaps only the Japanese can do it well. <laughs> it's a perfume company. They make an add-on. It's a nano diffuser, which is chemically assembling different tastes, probably up to a thousand on the fly. And you can actually get the nano diffusion quickly to your, to, your, to your sense. Now, how do they use this? They actually had the first ever campaign in a concert with a singer. They dish out this at the entrance. And as the users keep this throughout the concert, at one point, the singer will say, OK, everybody, now this is the climax of the, con of the concert. Snap on your accessory on your iPhone, and you will get to, to smell my sweat. <laughs> Gross, but it works. <laughs> now, if that's not gross enough or well, not exciting enough, then how about you put all these sensors together? Well, in my office, we are a proponent of Medicare effect, which means we bring different different disciplines together to come up with something crazy, and that's what we've done. We have uh, Udo Yin movie directors, special effects specialists, mobile developers, technology people, creative, and they put together all these sensors. And what do they come up with? Well, they come up with something called Smart D, which won us a grand award this year. And Unilever and, and, and LVMH already adopted this in China. What, what is this? Well, Smart D stands for 3D. The first D is display. We felt that the current outdoor display is very intrusive, not friendly, and not, not nice. So we use transparent LCD, which is a new technology. Basically, it's a piece of glass. But it can display video at the same time. So your normal shop window in the future will be just a shop window. But if, when you walk close to it, it becomes a multimedia display. Okay. Second, digital interaction. Users need to be engaged. Otherwise, you don't know who is looking at your thing. And you have no data, and you have no user. The third, download the mobile. And the cheapest way is to use sonic download, and it doesn't rely on Wi-Fi or 3G coverage. Well, after all these singing and dancing, and you know, we were very happy about this, we found that this is an old idea, because Tom Cruise already introduced this in 2002. <laughs> in Minority Report, he was standing in front of a transparent screen, doing all these motion sensing, digital interactions. It's already there as a concept, and now it's a reality. But even Tom Cruise missed one point. He missed the part about download to mobile. What's the point of having this half an hour interaction? You cannot take away the information that you personalize. Very easy. Pull your phone, everything is downloaded. Even without opening a camera or shooting at a QR code. Because the moment you pull out your phone, the Sony downloads to your phone. So we created something like this. It's a transparent screen. At the back is a product, whether it's a piece of jewelry or a mobile phone or a big display window with a fashion uh, model behind it. It's interactive. And download to mobile very easily. So you get to know your shopper immediately. It's an interactive experience. So in the future, shop window, transparent LCD. And we will work with Google Glass. And if the rumored Apple iWatch is real, we'll take a look at that. 
OLED graphene that tons to come. And we're very happy that you know, we have this special connection with Samsung subsidiary to get these kind of hardware for our development. Touch and motion, you can even play a game. And then download. Of course, we will use NFC. But when every phone is equipped with NFC, our estimate is about one to two year time. Today, any mobile phone that can run an app can run this because it has a microphone and an ask speaker. And, and that's all we need. Okay, well, last year it's already in. NFC event. We did a trial with MTR to turn all the interactive ads into something that users can download and take away. And something crazy with Unilever, we're going to replace all the convenience store fridge, fridge window, fridge door. So when you go to an ice cream fridge, you walk close, then it's going to promote a particular brand and then give you a coupon on mobile. So by the time you open the door, guess what brand you're going to choose? It's a service with technology, business model, and perhaps more effective than any other means of advertising. I'm not going to show you the video, but I do have two or three minutes left. I want to talk about you know, how we survive through all these. You know, we mes mesmerize ourselves with a dream, of course, but we also like to be lighthearted about it. Now, in Building service and technology with sensors, we apply a test to our, ourselves. Anything that we build, let's say for a bank, let's say mobile banking deposit function, or our own identified cash function, we put it into a test with a de developer. If a developer cannot understand and know how to use this particular feature within 30 seconds, then we fail. Right? And we call this a sky for test. Just like the sky. He's trying to book a hotel. Without finishing the booking, he cannot open his parachute. So 30 seconds max, or he'll die. Like this is how we treat, how seriously we treat our service. Well, he finished booking, he opened his parachute, he landed on the hotel beach, the hotel is confirmed. Lucky him. Yeah. Now, you have to make sure that we have full our reception. Otherwise, <laughs> it's kind of hard to, to book a hotel. So far, no one actually died in our company, so I guess we're doing quite okay. Last but not least, um, we survive, we excel because we choose a place where other competitors are irrelevant. There are perhaps 500 mobile developers in Hong Kong. Some are individuals, some are as big as we do. We don't look at them. Because what matters is the global market. And we don't really, in Chinese we call it, we go to the core of what we believe and we do it extremely well. And in this process, people can copy one app, but they cannot copy our dream. We build a core confidence. I still remember that companies like five or 10 years ago that brag themselves by saying, I'm a Nokia developer. They heavily rely themselves on a particular technology platform. And those companies are not around today. So I never say and I never position myself as an iPhone developer, iPhone app developer, although we produce most there and we have over 100 apps across the platforms already. Our core companies come from a medical effect that combines different people in the following area. Creativity, technology, and user experience. And user experience from the three are the most important. Two, two quotes to end the presentation. The first one, everybody quotes Steve Jobs, but you know, it's kind of uh, too much. Uh, I'd rather quote someone that is his idol. So this guy is his idol, Mr. Edwin Land. He basically said something that exemplifies what Steve Jobs has done in the past 10, 20 years of his life. Basically, don't do anything that someone else can do. Don't undertake a project unless it's manifestly important and nearly impossible. He didn't say impossible. He didn't say important. He just said manifestly important and nearly impossible. And no one else? Not that many people want to do it. And medical health helped us a lot. I still believe 
that we are crazy, and perhaps we need to be crazy because those who are crazy are those who actually make it at the end. I'll try my best, and I hope you do too. Thank you.